Better Together. Author and pastor Rusty George discusses his latest book and how you can discover the power of community. Plus, Efren Graham is here with the latest news from the world of entertainment. All that and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's Efren Graham with this week's top five stories from Studio Five. At number five. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. Destiny Child star Michelle Williams says yes to Pastor Chad Johnson. Posting photos on Instagram, Williams shared she's engaged to Johnson, who also serves as chaplain for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the L.A. Dodgers. I was so shocked and I was crying so loud that people were turning around going back to their rooms and going to the restaurant because they was like, did she just find out something he did bad? What happened? Williams posted, the love of my life proposed, and I said, yes, I will, I will, I will. I'm not worried about a thing, cause I know you are guiding me. At number four, from Cry for Mummy, to Triple Crown, to Little Prince Perfect, the London headlines are a buzz for a new baby. And the Royals have taken their new little bundle of joy home. Kate Middleton gave birth to a baby boy Monday morning and left St. Mary's Hospital seven hours later with Prince William and the new baby who joined siblings Prince George and Princess Charlotte. The new kid is now fifth in line for the throne. At number three. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has a God has sent him to be shall be saved by his love. 45 young people ages 7 to 18 are gearing up to compete for $100,000 when the National Bible Bee returns with six fast-paced weekly episodes. That was awesome. With hosts Jason and David Benham, emails Wayne and Hannah Leary. I love that you recited that. You got a thousand points. <laughs> the National Bible Bee premieres exclusively on Facebook Live at BibleBee.tv beginning April 24th. Amazing job. I'm inspired now. In the world, they see me as a tall guy, but in the spirit, you're a giant. At number two. And you Travis Green is one of more than a dozen Christian artists nominated for a 2018 Billboard Music Award. He's up for Best Gospel Album and Best Gospel Artist. Does that get old? No, man, no, man. <laughs> man, it's so cool, man. You know, I, you know, I kind of started from the bottom. <laughs> I like it. Okay, Drake, we take so, it. <laughs> so, um, no, it never gets old, man. I, I mean, it, it's been a long journey. Um, I know a lot of people who just kind of get nipped to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, he kind of came out of nowhere. I've been doing this for a while. Mercy Me is up for Best Christian Artist, along with Hillsong United. Have you ever seen the wonder? Whose Wonder Project is also up for Best Christian Album. I see the world in life. I see the world in wonder. At number one. Rick, I just want you to know, we could not be more proud of you, and this is proof, because I hate doing this. After wrapping the final episode of ABC's The Middle, actress Patricia Heaton and co-star Jen Ray travel to Uganda to serve South Sudanese refugees. How long does it take? So it takes like uh, about 30 minutes. Along with the humanitarian aid agency World Vision, Heaton posted videos like this on her Facebook page. Gina said, God, please let Victor know that you are with him. You will never leave him. Emerald says, please be with his parents as well. Reading prayers, hundreds of her fans sent to encourage a 14-year-old refugee named Victor. It's easy to do things you like for people, but doing something you hate, that's love. Well, Patricia Heaton, she's gotten, uh, she's now doing mission trips. Yes, What's... yes, she does a lot of work with World Vision. Um, I followed her for a long time, an outspoken Christian, 
uh, and to see her heart and then take along another cast member. Um, they've wrapped the final season of the show. The final episode will be seen May 22nd, and what a way to celebrate. I'm going to go and put my hands to work uh, to reach people. She asked her fans to send prayers to the children, uh, the refugees there, so that she could share them with them. And uh, for that little kid right there, I think he had like more than 70 letters, and she yeah. read a great number of them to yeah. him. Just let him know, we're praying for you. We know that you're struggling. We know that there's a crisis here, but we're, we're pulling for you. And what a touching one moment for that child to say, Absolutely. wow, there are people halfway around the world saying, um, you know, to I'm see praying a for smile you. on his face, I mean, you know, he's certainly dealing with a crisis, possibly um, an orphan without parents. Um, but to see the smile on his face, uh, he doesn't necessarily know who she is, but he knows that she's there sharing these beautiful letters and just beaming. What were they making? We, I saw them with big sticks <laughs> and some kind of, it was, some was kind it rice of dough or dough? Or, or? It was some kind of dough where they were sort of making some sort of bread. I think the experts came in and took I, that I, job I, over. I, it, they didn't know what they were doing. No, they did. <laughs> they were having trouble. They admitted that. I think they, they took that photo op and then said, okay, let people who know what they're doing <laughs> handle that. We'll go back to reading letters and sure play with the kids. I want to eat that dough, but no. anyway. All right. Well, we got billboard music. Yes. Uh, we've got Christians represented. It's uh, beautiful. I want to say 13. Um, happy to say that a great number of them have appeared on Studio 5. Travis Green uh, among them. Uh, we've interviewed him. Uh, he's up for Best Gospel Album, uh, as well as uh, Best Gospel Artist. Uh, Mercy Me, what a year they're having after the, you know their, their film. Uh, they're nominated again this year. Uh, we will see the Billboard Music Awards on NBC uh, at the end of May. I want to say May 20th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and Hillsong, I mean, they just keep cranking it out. They're nominated for Best uh, Christian Album for the album Wonder, um, which is a great, great album. I certainly still enjoy that, and I enjoy that song Wonder. Did they ever uh, retire awards when you when you win so many? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you no longer, you get the Lifetime Award, and no, then no. you're not eligible anymore? No, as Travis Green said, because I did ask him, you know, after getting all these nominations, does this ever get old? Because you've been nominated quite a bit. I want to say nine stellar awards, three Grammy Awards, now the Billboard Awards. And he goes, it, it doesn't get old as a reminder, you know, I'm here, but it, the journey to get here uh, has been long. Um, it's just a testament of God's faithfulness yeah. for them. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. All overnight successes <laughs> yeah, yeah. are a long time coming. A long and time it coming. It usually starts decades before the yeah. overnight. When a painter paints a masterpiece, people say, well, you did that in a couple of hours. No, that's that's the result of, of years <laughs> decades, and years. Decades you of got training it. Uh, you got to get there. Mm -hmm. All right, National Bible Bee, we've got some new Bible Bee contest contestants. $100,000 yes. $100, is the award. $100,000 prize. Last I checked was a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money, yes, a lot of money indeed. If you watch this, I, I did watch the, the first episode on Tuesday, which was on Facebook. Uh, the amazing ability of these kids to quote scripture, literally just by giving, I give you the chapter and verse and you just have to go. Right. Wow, to commit all that to memory. I know that on some Sundays when I've got to either teach Sunday school, I'm struggling to try to remember, okay, now where was that verse again? I know it's in there, but these kids are amazing to watch, amazing. Yeah, it is, and, and, and I have to say, it, it seems like they're gifted to they do are. that. They yes. It's just an amazing thing to say, okay, I, I can recite, just call it out and I'll give it to you. Amazing. And many of them, uh, it is clear that English is not their native language because, you mm. know, you, you can hear it uh, in their accents, but still able to, to quote scripture so significantly. Beautiful to see. Be in English, beautiful to see. Speaking of English, mm -hmm. let's go to England. Oh. We have a new royal. <laughs> We're still waiting for the name. When are you going to name this child? We expect, expect it any day now uh what people what, have been what talking do you, about. what do you call a, what's what what's what's the last name uh, you know my wife asked that very same question that's creepy uh, it was, <laughs> 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 what is his last name uh and i think it's just the duke of of but there was that because i looked and it's just the duke of cambridge i think that's it um, for all of them. That's their last name. Yeah, Duke, that's all I could find. It's like, okay, I can't find what that should be. Um, but he's listed as the Duke of Cambridge. So you, he is the you fifth in line to the throne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fifth in line to the throne for this one. We think his name's going to be Arthur, but Arthur? we're not sure. Yeah.
King off. Yeah, uh-huh. we think that. Uh-huh. Um, the other fascinating is thing. Is a lady in the lake going to give him a sword? Is, is, we're going that, we're going uh-huh. that way? Mm-hmm. <laughs> going old school, bring yeah. it back. Yes, yes. The other fascinating story mm-hmm. there is if you saw um, Kate Middleton seven hours after giving birth, she looked perfect seven hours after giving birth and hitting home. People she were, was in makeup and hair. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. She, 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 she had was, hair, makeup, she, and everything. Before she was she shining. Was just look. She was I mean, ready. She was ready for her photo op. Yes. My wife was. And little, heels, too. Yeah. My wife was a little, mean, little jealous, going, wow, that's not how I looked after giving birth to your two. Um, but. Yes. And, and notice the underline on your two. Yes, <laughs> my two. You, I, uh, she had nothing to do there. Your children yes, now. You know you're in trouble when she, she says did the work. your child your is doing this. You got it. You uh, got it. My. Yeah, time to step up and yes. be dead. Trying. <laughs> Trying. All right, Destiny's Child. We got uh-huh. a marriage. Yes. Uh, and he's the chaplain for the Dodgers and the Steelers. Yes. So what is, is this some... I mean, they're going to be bi coastal. I mean. <laughs> he travels a lot. He's also a pastor um, based in, in the LA area. He founded a church there. Um, this, the love story for these two they met at one of his the, a retreat he was hosting. She had just gotten out of a horrible relationship, just, just dating. He as well. Um, they both were praying for God to move in their lives uh, and to make them comfortable being single if that's what he called them to do. So they meet. Um, if, and I, if I'm one of their exes right now, I go, what do you mean horrible relationship? <laughs> that, those are their words. <laughs> I was so good to them. Those are their words. <laughs> they were, were really, really uh, uh, upset, but found oh, each just, other, became fast friends, and fell in totally love. Just totally dissed them. I, those are their words. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but they became your mine. words. Getting married this summer, he traveled right. to Illinois to speak to every single member of their family and ask for her hand without her knowing, and then brought the video to show her, your mom and dad approves, your aunt approves. Now I want you to say yes. And she said, yes, 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 I will. That's like putting pressure on you. Yeah. <laughs> mom, mom and dad are with me in yes, this. Yes, your whole family, aunts, uncles, treated him to dinner. She had no clue he was in Illinois doing this, and the following weekend he came and proposed to her. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. And Pleasure. if you want to have all the latest in entertainment news, all the gossip about horrible X relations, <laughs> no. uh, just check out Ephraim's <laughs> weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. And Ephraim, we'll see you again next week. See you next week. Well, up next, he learned how to pray by watching a children's TV show. Since then, his family have seen the miraculous. Meet this nine-year-old prayer warrior right after this. Well, welcome back. We're in the middle of our spring week of prayer. And if you haven't sent us your prayer requests, all you have to do is go to our number, 1-800-700-7000, or you can log on to CBN.com. And we'll be praying for your requests every day on the 700 Club and also in our chapels daily at noon. Well, CBN Superbook is teaching children all around the world the stories of the Bible. And in the Philippines, it's also inspired one young boy to pray for a miraculous healing. Milfa began raising her grandson, Sam, after his mother could no longer provide for him. She helps Sam with homework and they do chores together. But one of their favorite activities is watching CBN's Superbook. I learned from Superbook from Daniel. He trusted in the Lord and he always prayed. Melfa and Sam have faced challenges together, like the time Sam was sick with a high fever and asthma. I felt so helpless. I was sobbing. Then Sam said, don't cry. Let's just pray. Sam reminded his grandmother about the faith of Daniel. He prayed and prayed until God saved him from the lions, and he was set free. The next day, my asthma was gone. Jesus healed me. Recently, when Sam heard his mother had cancer, he urged his grandmother to take him to visit so he could pray with her. He had not seen his mom since he was six months old. I was happy because I saw her for the first time but I was sad because she was sick. I pray, Lord, you are my doctor. I pray that you will heal her, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving her a life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sam said he continued to pray for his mom 
especially when he heard she'd stopped cancer treatments. She'd run out of money to pay for them. Months later, Sam met his mom again. This time, she told him some good news. The doctor said her symptoms were gone, that she was cancer-free. Sam knew that meant they would have more time together. He said, thank you, Lord, that you healed her and answered my prayer. I love Superbook because it taught me to never give up praying. Superbook is teaching children. It's teaching them how to pray, how to believe that there is a Savior. It's teaching them the stories of the Bible. And you can be a part of it. You can be a part of sharing the stories of the Bible with the children of the world. We're now in 43 languages. We're on our way to 55 languages. And there's the broadcast language map. And you can see all the different places where we're broadcasting the episode, either on the internet or through broadcast television or through satellite television. And it's all made possible because people like you care enough to give. So if you wanna do that, join the Superbook Club. And it's a gift of $25 or more. Uh, we'll send you latest episodes of, of the Superbook series. Right now, we have a Superbook Explorer. The two episodes on it are, if I can read it, Peter's Denial and Samson, um, uh, Samuel and the Call of God. So it's yours. Uh, you get not just one copy, you'll get three copies of the latest DVD. And your gift goes into the production cost of the series, the distribution cost, and then most importantly, the translation cost so that we can get these wonderful stories out to the children of the world. They can hear it in their own language. So if you want to do it, call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, coming up, pastor and author Rusty George has helpful advice for introverts, extroverts, and everyone in between. Find out why he says we're better together right after this. A recent study showed that individualism is on the rise and that social media is the largest contributing factor. Well, author and pastor Rusty George says we need each other now more than ever. Take a look. Our culture is obsessed with selfies, better known as photos taken of ourselves using smartphones. These selfies are a snapshot of our society's current state of mind. Meet Rusty George. He's the lead pastor of Real Life Church in Valencia, California. He says it's hard to focus on others when we're so busy looking at our own needs. We really can discover the better you by discovering the people around you. In his book, Better Together, Rusty shares surprising truths about what real friendships look like and shows us how to unlock our prisons of isolation from the inside out. Well, Rusty joins us now. It's great to have you with us. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. How do you explain the phenomenon? It seems we're more connected than ever. Mm -hmm. We have more access to what our friends and family are doing and through their posts. Uh, but at the same time, we seem to be lonelier than ever. Why is that? Yeah, I think that that's kind of the lie that we buy into, and, and we don't really see it coming. We, we start you know, collecting all of these friends. I've got a thousand friends. I've got all these people. But after a while, you can kind of tailor make your life for them to see. You can adjust it to what it is that they see. So that's not really who you are. And then you start to get very envious of other people's lives. As I heard one pastor say, we're comparing uh, other people's highlight reel to our blooper reel because we see what they want us to see and then we feel what we really live. And it creates this distance, this isolation, and it, tell, it teaches us this lie that nobody could understand what I'm going through. Nobody would ever you know, resonate with my life. And as a result, I'm just alone. Why, why is the church not, I guess, going further to say, no, let's not isolate? You know, what part of our father don't you understand? Um, <laughs> you know, what, what, what can the church do here? Well, the church obviously is leveraging social media to help, uh, you know, get our message out, which is a good thing. Uh, but it also has to walk that fine line of not idolizing it as well. And so we have to continue to realize that we're one of the few places in society where anybody can walk in. You don't have to have a ticket. You don't have to be a member. You can come in and be a part of it. And so by pr providing resources like small groups and recovery groups and grief groups, you create opportunities for people to connect where they normally wouldn't connect face to face. How, how do you get past what I'll call the sort of the church face that, 
You know, just like in social media, we, we, we want to show the best parts of what we're doing. Right. When we go to church, you know, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Right. I'm, I'm too blessed to be stressed. All of that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, is that part of the problem? I think it is part of the problem. I think the greatest epidemic we have that's really hurting the church is church shopping. Hmm. Uh, you think about that term in and of itself. It is such a consumeristic mindset of shopping around till I find a church that meets all my needs. And here's the surprising truth. After a while, they're not going to meet your needs anymore. You'll have to go find another church. And so that keeps everybody at surface level. I recommend to people to pick a church and stay there. Let your kids grow up there. Let them build lifelong friends there. Recognize there'll be things that you don't like or disagree with because we're all human. Sit in the same seat all the time because you'll get to know those people that sit around you. Get into a small group or a Sunday school class or a fellowship group of some sort and move beyond that barrier of Sunday only. Have people over to your homes. And when inviting people to church, invite them to dinner first before you invite them to come with you on Sunday. Mm -hmm. well, what's the key to sort of um, getting someone to get real? Mm. Um, I know joining is part of that. And then with that joining, the building of trust. Right. Um, but what, what's the key to that? You know, I think the, the key is you have to become real your, you know, yourself first. The problem is, is we're all scared to kind of, you know, show what's under the bed, so to speak, until we see that other people have junk under theirs as well. So the quicker you can become real with somebody else, um, I think, uh, you know, it's James that tells us to confess our sins to each other. Um, not so we'll be forgiven, but so we'll be healed. Mm -hmm. There's this, this secrets make us sick mentality that a lot of us really wrestle with. And the more we can find some people in our life to open up with and share that with, the more we begin to realize other people deal with the same thing. And then they begin to reciprocate. They begin to share with you. I mm -hmm. recommend to people, if you're in some kind of a group and they're asking for prayer requests, share something. What's going on in your life right now that you need prayer for? And then if you're in that group and you hear that prayer request, write it down. And here's, a, here's an idea. Pray for it. <laughs> Actually pray for it on a daily basis so that the next time you see them, you can ask them, how is that going? You mentioned that. How are you doing with that? And I've just noticed when people reply back to me with, I've been praying for that. Tell me how it's going. I now see them as a trusted person in my life that I can build a, a friendship with because they cared enough to pray. Yeah, and share one another's burdens and right. thus fulfill the law of God. Absolutely. That's the real love that we need to, to have. And it's been my experience when you start sharing what you've gone through or your struggles, then you find that these sins are common. Right. Um, we, we, we love to say, oh, okay, I'm, no one was ever as bad as I was. Right. Uh, but when you start sharing, you find out it's common. Mm -hmm. And then you start into a whole conversation where you really glorify God that you realize just how great the redemption is. Right. That, you know, I'm, I'm so much better than I used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still getting better day by day. Right. I think that's the beauty of the way that God has designed us in that we do need each other. We are supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We are the, the church, the ecclesia, which is more than just a building, but it's this community that's spreading the love of Jesus. And that has to be done with our um, deficiencies in mind. There are things that I'm not good at. I need other people to be great at so we can compensate for each other. It takes the pressure off of you as an individual as well, because it's no longer just, I have to be all these things to mm -hmm. all people at all times. We start looking at that, that list of the fruits of the Spirit and that list of the, uh, the gifts of the Spirit less as a to-do list for ourselves, but more of a, this is what the church is and how we do this together. Is part of the problem the culture, the sort of rugged individualism of America? <laughs> um, and, and you read the Gospels, you read the Old Testament, it's all about community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, it does get down to tribe, but it is all about community. It is. I think we're living in an age where we're getting to uh, pass the rugged individualism thing a little bit. Um, beyond, we're getting beyond that to some degree. It's still a little bit managed in what we share on social media. But the more we can get below the surface, the more we can admit, I'm not good at this. I struggle with this. I need help with this. That doesn't mean you need to air all your dirty laundry day one. But I think it's a process where you begin to share that with people. 
and people began to trust you as a trustworthy person to share their stuff with as well uh, because you were so vulnerable to begin with. My producers really want me to ask this question because I'm an introvert. What do you say to introverts? Well, I'm an to introvert as well. And I would tell you, you don't have to know everybody, but you got to know a few. Um, you know, we're all Legos of some sort. We've only got a few links to other people. And the introverts have the smaller, but you've got to link with some other people because you can't do this on your own. Amen. All right. Rusty's book is called Better Together, and it's available now wherever books are sold. Here's a word for you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again.